We left Eastern Iceland and headed south to set up a camp. After a week of new locations, this time we were somewhere very familiar. It's, uh, yeah, so it's 11 o'clock at night or just before 11 o'clock at night, at night, so I should be yelling in the campsite. But we're in the campsite in Hoffman and literally an hour ago we were in windstorm and uh, it was totally clouded over and now it seems like it's starting to break up. Still windy, we're still dealing with like 50 mile an hour or 50 kilometer an hour winds. And it was a bit of a mission setting up the tents here, but we're set up. I think the forecast is that it's going to lift and we're going to go take pictures of a bit of a classic for a change on this Iceland trip. We're going to go to Vesterholm for this cruise. Pew! Oh, that, that's not the way to the car. It's that one. I'll be honest, with the heavy wind and rain, I didn't really plan on taking a picture today. And with the weather rough at sunset, we had to wait 30 minutes for better weather at sunrise. We made it to Vesterhorn, and two things are consistent here. One, every time we come here, I end up taking a photo from up top here. And the second thing is, it's always windy. We're always battered by wind. I've gotten great photos here in the past and I've never gotten great light and right now we're getting some really beautiful light up top and I'm hoping that somehow we can get a little bit of great light as well although that being said it's going to be backlit so we're not going to get that epic you know full-on perfect light but I'm hoping it's good and I'm hoping to do something a little bit different today there's a lot of cloud movement still up top so I'm messing around with some long exposures Right now I'm going way too far and I'm going with a four minute exposure. I don't know why, just to see what would happen. And then after I'm gonna kind of cut that down to probably a minute or 30 seconds, just to get this dramatic sky in motion up top. And I think this is probably pretty close to being done. Three minutes, so uh, we'll play the Jeopardy soundtrack as we wait. Okay, the image is done, and yeah, honestly, four minutes is way too much. I like my composition, actually. I've got grass, I've got leading lines, it kind of dances around, the light bounces around. But four minutes is a bit too dramatic, so I'm going to cut this back to about, I don't know, 30 seconds, I think? The clouds are moving really fast, so... Uh, yeah, let's do 30 seconds. We'll switch off my six stop and put in a three stop filter to make that happen. Okay, that one's done. And that looks much better. You've got, you still have the drama. The sky's moving so much. You definitely don't need that four minutes, but this ended up being 25 seconds. You still have that drama. You still have that movement, but uh, it's a little bit more structured. So this is nice. Uh, this is one of those situations that if I wasn't being super lazy, I might, or if it wasn't super windy, I might try to get my long lens way up at this peak and just capture this light and uh, the clouds moving around it. So I might try that, but it might be a little bit of a struggle with this wind. So let's see what happens. This morning was such a tease. I mean, how do we go from being socked in with rain and cloud at sunset to epic light in the 30 minute gap where it's dark to blue skies at sunrise? It's bad luck, but I tried. Using the long lens, I tried to isolate the remaining good light. but the wind didn't make it easy either. 
and before I knew it, all the clouds were gone and we were left with a photographer's worst nightmare. A beautiful sunny day. Okay, this was uh, fun. I think this morning was kind of a bit of a, I won't call it a letdown because we got some cool images and had some really beautiful light for a second. It was one of those mornings that looked like everything was bad and was going to become epic and then became really nice. But like in the nice for life, bad for photography way, all the clouds just disappeared and then now there's not a whole lot of light. We packed up and headed to the car as this golden light smashed the scene behind us. I don't know where my head was at, but for some reason, this scene wasn't worth a photo. Let me explain. Okay, I wanna jump in and cut this video off here from the future, because I wanna talk about something really quick, which is just being tired in photography and pushing through. And throughout my life, I think I've been pretty good about not making excuses about being tired and pushing through and getting a photo despite being tired. This was one of the big exceptions, the glaring exceptions. We're at Vesterhorn, the light's okay, didn't get great photos, the sun comes up, it's blue sky, bluebird day, it's beautiful out, but it's not typical photography conditions. Meanwhile, on the other side of the road, there's some lupins that are just being absolutely doused in beautiful, soft, semi-soft uh, light. I could see it with my eyes that it looked beautiful, but I was tired and I was skeptical that there was going to be a great photo there. So I stayed in the car. And that's something I don't think I've done in my photography history. I stayed in the car and uh, waited for Greg and a couple others to finish some shots. And then, of course, I saw the drone footage, I saw the photos they made, and I was like, I have dozens of photos from Vesterhorn. I don't have a single one with lupins and light like that in front of it. I totally wasted an opportunity. And yeah, it's okay to be tired. It's okay to not want to not feel like going out to photograph. And it's okay to, you know, miss a shot here or there. But I just wanted to talk about that because I thought that it was like one of those moments on the trip where I was like, okay, Brendan, time to wake up. <laughs> you, you got to get out there and take the photo. Because great photos don't come from sitting around waiting for great light. They come from just going out and taking pictures as often as you can and making the most of whatever the situation is. And I didn't make the most of that situation and it's gonna haunt me because the photos everybody got from that location were epic. And uh, yeah, I, there's still one more video from Iceland so hopefully I redeem myself. And if you wanna come to Iceland with me, there's still a couple spots on my Iceland trip this winter which is going to be epic. So I'll see you there or I'll see you on the next video. Peace.